welcome to another video on the history of Camp Blanding. I'm Dr. George Cressman. I serve the museum as its historian. And today I'd like to tell you a little humorous story about the great 1943 beer crisis at Camp Blanding. So during World War II, the Army Exchange Service was put in place to ensure that every soldier whether in a training camp or in a combat theater, got the comfort items they would have had as civilians. So comfort items included things like toiletry and food items, such as candy bars and chewing gum. Perhaps most important from the soldier's perspective were cigarettes and beer. Soldiers could buy comfort items in a post exchange for relatively low prices. In the combat theaters, soldiers um, in combat units were given comfort items for free. That is, of course, when they were available. The beer soldiers could buy had a maximum alcohol content of 3.2%. It was believed that soldiers could not get intoxicated with beer that had this relatively low alcohol level. The Army Exchange Service uh, had to work in the context of the rationing efforts and price setting guidelines set by the Office of Price Administration. This meant that both cigarettes and beer were at times extremely hard to get. In 1943, the strains of trying to point, provide comfort items were most evident at Camp Blanding. Both beer and cigarettes were getting scarce rapidly. The scarcity became very apparent at Camp Blanding in 1943. The acting exchange officer, Captain Harris Gray Jr., wrote to Colonel Seaver at the 4th Service Command in Atlanta, Georgia, saying, quote, the exchange depends largely on its volume of beer sale, sales for its profits. And it is believed that if the supply of this item continues to be uncertain, it will be necessary for us to raise prices on other items. Captain Gray wrote that in May 1943, Camp Landing had received 16, one six, boxcars of beer, but the requirement at the training camp was 30 boxcars, 3-0. Also in May, the camp had received 300 barrels of draft beer, but it needed 500 barrels of draft beer. Uh, Captain Gray reported that the Red Top Brewery had informed him that they were cutting production of the 3.2% beer. That was the first product that they were reducing because it was the lowest profit product in the Red Top Brewery. There were a number of causes for this dwindling supply of beer. The War Production Board had limited the production of malt, critical to the brewing process. And the Defense Transportation Office was limiting the availability of shipping space for the return of beer bottles to brewers who, who could not get enough uh, glass to replace the bottles that were not being returned. Meanwhile, troops and combat theaters had priority call for whatever 3.2% alcohol beer was actually being produced. Captain Gray, had appealed to the Jack's Brewery to produce more 3.2% beer for Camp Landing. And that brewery had no interest at all in getting into the business. At Camp Landing, beer availability remained a critical issue up to the end of the war. The Army Exchange Service could not, of course, force brewers to make 3.2% beer and the Exchange Service was unsuccessful in getting the War Board 
to allow increases in the malt supply. As a consequence, alas, camp landing was never nearly as wet as the soldiers would have liked. Thanks for spending this short time with me. Come visit us at the Camp Landing Museum. We're open every day from noon to four.